Good day. This video is a supplemental video to the mammoth video which I made yesterday in which I discussed the contradictory uh, policies of the Biden administration towards Russia and I discussed also the sanctions that the United States government has imposed upon Russia, specifically the sanctions which pertain to Russian sovereign debt. I said in that video that these sanctions against Russian sovereign debt would not have any major effect because the principal buyers of Russian sovereign debt on, in Russia's financial markets are um, Russian investors. American investors are only marginal players and the Russian financial markets are fully capable of sorting, uh, uh, of making up the difference if those American investors are forced to go away. What I had not appreciated is that these sanctions are actually toothless. They are in reality hollow. They, in fact, change nothing about the way in which these bond auctions by the Russian government are held or about the way in which American investors buy these bonds. Now, to explain why, I'm afraid I'm going to have to discuss things, rather technical matters, which can be dense and rather confusing, but please bear with me. Briefly, bonds, government bond, governments issue bonds, or these are loan documents, in um, two different forms. One is that they can issue bonds in the international money markets, and the Russian government in the past has indeed floated bonds in the international money markets, particularly those in Europe, which are denominated in, in euros. These are so-called euro bonds, and the Russian government has floated such bonds in the past, though for some time it has stopped doing so. Now, it is important to say that American investors are already prohibited for, but from buying um, Russian bo bonds, euro bonds, which are floated in the international money markets. But um, in any event, the Russian government has largely stopped that form of euro bond issuance. Um, instead, the Russians have issued bonds on a fairly regular basis, denominated in euros within Russia to their own financial markets. These bonds are called OFZs. Now, the reason the Russian government does that is not because it needs to raise funds in order to finance or fund its operations. The, government, the Russian government normally runs a budget surplus and it doesn't therefore need to borrow in order to pay or to pay for its operations. On occasions when the Russian government, the Russian budget does fall into deficit, Russia has a very large rainy day fund, the National Welfare Fund, which it can borrow from in order to cover whatever temporary deficit it runs. So this this decision by the Russian government to issue OFZs or ruble bonds is not intended to fund Russian government operations. It has a completely different purpose. The reason it is done is because the Russian government believes that issuing ruble bonds or OFZs to Russian financial institutions, primarily Russian banks, will strengthen those institutions. It will provide them with a hard asset, government bonds, which are considered an extremely safe asset because the Russian government is not at any risk of bankruptcy, which the uh, banks can then use as a hedge uh, when they engage in more risky lending to Russian businesses and Russian companies. That is, by the way, a universal practice. It is done by all governments to a greater or lesser extent. It is a way of developing Russian financial markets and, and strengthening Russian financial institutions in order to increase investment within the economy. 
The Russian government didn't do that to any great extent 10 years ago, because in those days, people, quite rightly, had doubts about its solvency, given its previous history of financial collapse and default. Today, it is able to do it because Russia's, Russia's, the Russian government's finances are so obviously in order and because Russian, the Russian financial system has matured to the point where it is able to buy these bonds when they are offered. So the result is that the Russian government sells these bonds to Russian banks the Russian banks buy these bonds. They that way have an, a, a reliable and strong asset, and that gives them the leeway to increase their lending to the rest of the Russian economy, which, by the way, they have been steadily doing. It's a, um, a well-known practice, and that's what this is all about. Now, American investors have been prohibited from for some time from buying bonds from the Russian government, which the Russian government issues in the form of euro bonds in the international money markets. American investors, however, have not been prohibited from participating in the Russian government's uh, uh, ruble bond or OFZ auctions within Russia's own financial markets. What these sanctions do is that it now prohibits them from doing so. From now on, American investors cannot buy OFZs or ruble bonds directly from the Russian government, or to be precise, from the Russian Finance Ministry, from the Russian National Welfare Fund, which is Russia's rainy day fund, and from the Russian Central Bank. However, they are not prevented from buying these OFCs in the secondary market from Russian banks. And a discussion which took place, which is reported in the White House website, actually confirms as much. Directly after the new American sanctions were imposed, there was a discussion um, by certain U.S. senior U.S. officials, presumably from the State Department and the Treasury, perhaps even Secretary Blinken and the new Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary Yellen, um, in which they actually discussed what these sanctions amounted to. And there is, amongst this discussion, um, which, by the way, I should stress, was conducted anonymously by these officials, but which is reported in detail by the White House in, on its website, there is this extraordinarily interesting sentence. We want to be clear that this prohibition only applies to newly issued ruble sovereign debt in the primary market and not to the secondary market or existing sovereign debt holdings. So what this seems to say, in fact, what this does say, is that though an American investor, say um, JP Morgan, cannot buy OFCs, ruble bonds, directly from the Russian government, from, say, the Ministry of Finance or the Russian Central Bank or the Russian National Welfare Fund, it can buy these OFCs at second hand, if you like, in the so-called secondary market, from Russian banks. Now, the point to understand is that that, I suspect, is what has been happening anyway. To the extent that American banks or financial institutions or American private investors, say JP Morgan, want to buy Russian sovereign debt, uh, OFZs or ruble bonds, I doubt very much that they do so by participating in the primary auctions in Russia when the Russian government sells its OFZs. What I suspect happens 
is that the Russian government sells its OFCs to Russian banks, Sperbank, VTB, and the rest. And those banks hold most of those OFCs, but sell a proportion to various investors, some of whom might be American. That practice is going to continue unimpeded in the same way as before. In other words, these sanctions change literally nothing. Now, the main fact be a change, because I do wonder whether American banks, say JP Morgan, which have bought uh, Russian OFZs in the secondary market from, say, Sberbank, are going to want to do this to any great extent anymore. Perhaps not. Perhaps they will be worried that in some future round of sanctions, they will be prohibited from holding OFZs at all. Though, again, this comment makes it clear that um, any uh, existing ruble debt they hold, they don't need to unwind from. It's only future debt um, issued after 14th June 2021 that is involved. But having said that, I'm going to make a guess that for some time, perhaps indefinitely, um, American banks and financial institutions and wealthy American individuals are going to be very wary of buying OFZs, even in the secondary market, even from Russian banks, even though they're actually allowed to do so. If over time it seems that this pattern of sanctions ends, well, they might conceivably come back and start buying these OFZs in future from Russian banks, in which case everything will be back to as it was. However, the point to make is that the US government is itself going out of its way to draw attention to the fact that at the moment, buying OFCs at second hand is still permitted. And apparently, and presumably, that is what President Biden me meant when he said that he told Putin that he could have gone, he could actually have gone further, but that he chose not to do so. In other words, uh, Biden is in effect saying that he was under some pressure to outlaw the holding by American investors of OFZs, but that he decided not to do so. He decided to go for these very hollow sanctions instead, and that he doesn't want to go that far. He doesn't want to prohibit American investors from holding OFZs. We know, as a matter of fact, because there was a report some years ago, I think in 2018, by the Treasury to the Senate, in which the, the Treasury actually advised the, uh, co the Senate, Congress, against prohibiting American investors from holding OFCs. So it could be that the treasure, Treasury itself is unhappy about this uh, a, a general ban on OFCs, and that it is the Treasury, the US Treasury, which is counselling uh, the US government against taking that, that step, and that it is in fact unlikely that we're going to see any further sanctions prohibiting U.S. investors from holding OFZs at all. Well, we shall see. We shall see what the U.S. government does. But for the moment, all we need to know is this. These are sanctions in name only. For appearances, they look tough. They make it seem to the world as if the U.S. government has taken a strong step Against, America, uh, Ru uh, against Russian sovereign debt. In fact, and in reality, when you go into the detail, they have changed, uh, they have changed nothing at all. For a sh while, people in the United States might be a little wary 
of buying OFZs. But if there are no further sanctions rounds, probably that will change and we will see American investors participating in the secondary market for OFZs to exactly the same extent that we saw previously. Well, we shall see. I'm going to end by making one further brief observation. I wonder how many invest American investors do actually, as it happens, hold OFZs. How many American investors do actually buy ruble bonds from Russian banks in the secondary market? I am guessing very few indeed. Over the course of the same uh, discussion uh, where, those, where that sentence was made, um, a U.S. official, uh, again anonymously, advised that only around a quarter of OFZs are held by, by non-Russians. That official didn't say what proportion of that quarter are Americans, but my guess is very few. I'm going to make a guess that the primary buyers of OFCs in the secondary bond market are not Americans, but Far Eastern and Middle Eastern investors and possibly wealthy Russians living abroad. I doubt that American financial institutions hold OFCs to any very great extent. Why would they even want to? In which case, of course, these sanctions become even more pointless and token than they already are. Well, thank you for bearing me uh, through me through this rather complicated video on this very complicated and rather dense subject. But I think it is perhaps useful to know that the sanctions announcement that we heard so much about and which has caused so much attention is actually hollow. Um, please remember to join me for future videos on this channel and um, I look forward to you joining me in future programs um, on our main channel, The Duran, where I do programs with my colleague and friend Alex Christoforo. Please also check out Alex's channel, you find links under this video. Please also ch check out our Check us out on our other platforms, BitChute, Library, Rumble, and especially Odyssey. Please also, to the extent that you can, support us via BitChute, uh, uh, sorry, by, by PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar. Remember, we accept donations in all currencies, including the new independent ones. Lastly, check out our Discord server, and of course, check out our shop. And look up the wonderful things that you will find there. Our amazing t-shirts, our magic mugs, our hats, our hoodies, our sweatshirts and all the rest. And please remember to check your subscription to this channel and to our other channels. And I look forward to you joining me on my next program. Thank you again for uh, uh, listening to this video on this rather arid subject. And I look forward to, to seeing you again. And have a wonderful day until then.